welcome back. My next guest is Ireland's only prima ballerina. She left Ireland age 14 to train in Russia, where she went on to star in Swan Lake, Giselle, The Nutcracker, and last week saw her on Channel 4 putting 18 big ballerinas through their paces. Will you please welcome Monica Lotman? <laughs> I've never seen anyone walk out so gracefully. Oh, thank you. It's Absolutely. years and years of practice. Yes. How are you? Uh, and listen, I'm, I'm good. How are you? Very good, thank you. So you had the big ballerinas last week on Channel 4. Did anyone see that? They, they, so they got, would we call them big, 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 big boned? Yes. Yeah. So they got people who were big boned and they did Swan Lake in the end after just three hours, really. <laughs> 23 funny, weeks. 23 weeks. Yeah. The funny thing about them, right, I, you know, being kind of big born myself, I would associate big people with being clumsy. Mm. These people were very light on their feet, They were indeed, they? yeah. Some of them, one of the, if I could say, and I, I know she won't mind me saying this, one of the larger ladies, she was so light on her feet and she was such a beautiful mover with such an amazing presence. And when I was asked to do the show, actually she was the reason I wanted to do a show like this because, you know, with dancers and all the rumours about us not eating and all that kind of stuff, she just epitomised what you can do if you really want to dance and you really focus on yeah. dance. So Did you not find yourself thinking, though, God, if these people would lose weight? No. 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 Okay. Not at all, actually, not even for a second. You alluded to the rumours there because I suppose people would associate ballet with uh, eating disorders. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's not true. I just want to put that to bed right now. Uh, okay. You know, if you had Sonia O'Sullivan on here, you wouldn't be saying, Sonia, you know, you're very thin. You know, you just know the woman is very, very fit. She's an athlete. Okay. And the same applies to us. Like, I spend hours and hours training. So that's why I am the size I am. But genetically, I'm going to be this size anyway. So I don't feel like I have to apologise for my size. Yeah. Just the way those dancers shouldn't have to apologise for their size. But with eating disorders, I think... That's just not exclusive to ballet. That is just a fact of life. But there is a thing in ballet where, like, the, you know, the, the girls are not encouraged to have hips or chests or stuff, are they? Like, well, if you're training that much, you just don't. Okay. That's the thing. And if you do, yeah, it's it's not particularly welcomed. Listen, I bought um, a fridge a couple of weeks ago, and I live on the second floor of an apartment, and it was 47 kilos in weight. I am 50 kilos in weight. A man shouldn't be expected to lift over 54 kilos in weight. And it took two men, and these were strapping lads, Irish guys, to like lift it up the stairs. And y you know, to expect male uh, Yeah, but you could throw you over your shoulder and walk up the Perhaps. stairs. One man no. Is fridge, the fridge but is still, awkward as well. two of them, so what's that, 20 odd kilos each and they still couldn't do it. So, so it just made me realise really how important, and we have to look yeah. after our men. There's not that very many of them, and they're And so when you, you went off at 14 to Russia? Yes, I did, yeah. And, and wasn't that very young? You left your family and everything, and you went off into that kind of regime? Yeah, I was... I was it was a good age to do what I was about to do, but perhaps quite young to leave your family. Like were the I, other girls who went from Ireland, would that have been the age group, or were you quite young There was one other 14 year old, everybody else was 15 up to the age of 18, so there was okay. 10 girls and one boy. And so we all, you know, it was really like, we got the audition, so a, a woman from Russia came over, we, she picked out of 150 girls and boys, she picked 10 girls and one boy. And we did this audition in May, we went over at the end of August, I'd just gone 14. Yeah. But I remember just saying to my parents, this is really what I want to do. And because my yeah. father was in the Air Corps, if you want to do something and if you, you have to do it young. And I think this is why Ireland is so delayed in its <sighs> ballet development. They're starting at 17. It's too late. Okay. You should be working at but 17. But like you went into it, that's a very tough regime as well to go into, wasn't it? Like you're out in Russia, away from your family, and it's, yeah. a, it's a hard life, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it was hard, and there was a lot of, um, there was a lot of bullying, and the, you know, you had to deal with um, the teachers and the language, the language barriers, and you know, it, it was a very tough experience, but honestly, hand on heart, it was the makings of me now. In fairness, like I spent more than a few nights crying and wishing I was at home with my yeah. mammy. But she brought me up over the phone, and it made me as tough as nails. And yeah. I, you know, I did genuinely love it. Even would you though send a kid out there? I have a son. I would send him if he wanted to go. But you would, okay. If he wanted to do ballet, he could stay in. I, I could train him. Be because now it can be done <laughs> in, in Ireland, of course. Do you feel at all that, <laughs> apart from going there and the toughness, do you feel at all that you missed out then on your teenage years here? I did. And your, yeah, I missed out on my childhood, really. really. And. 
I missed out of being reared by my mother and my father and having, you know, like really, I'm really only coming to, to grips with the English language over the last couple of years. My language, my main language was Russian for so many, many years. So having to, you know, redevelop your language skills and your communication skills, I really had to do that in my kind of mid to late 20s, probably, yeah, quite late so 20s. So you, you came back, so, in, in your mid 20s? Yeah. And you I were came back and forth. I was kind of okay. commuting from Russia, back and forth. And were you essentially a Russian by... Head, mentally yes. a Russian at yes. that stage. Yeah. Right. And I was, was it very hard to fit back in? So all your friends that you have when you're 14 have gone on uh, they're education. All married, yeah, they're right. all married. They all have houses. They all have relationships. And I come back here. My, my mother um, passed away. And I just decided I could not stand there in all honesty and stare at myself in the mirror for eight hours a day. It just didn't make any sense. When you see the person, one of the pieces you people you love most in the world take draw their last breath and it was an honor to be there with her when she did that yeah you can't stand and look at yourself in the mirror for eight hours after that so I decided that what I was going to do is I was going to come back to Ireland and set up you know I have my my schools and my mm. my company but I wanted to set up a full-time ballet school to educate dancers to go from here to work so they would not have to be reared over the phone and so they wouldn't okay. end up working in a wine bar because they started ballet at 17 because that folks is just too late you got to start early. This is a sport, you know, and it's a tough sport. So I decided I would do it here so people could stay with their parents. Now, they don't want to stay with their parents. They want to go to England and have fun. And they do. And they do. Like a lot of people travel from here to England and they disappear off the radar because they get sucked in by the nightclubs and the nightlife and the, the life that you, you lead, you can potentially lead. But if you're going to train to be in the Olympics or to be an athlete, you can't do that. You have yeah. to stay at home. You have to have a regime and you must have the strictest discipline on yourself. You, you are very tough on these Sorry, kids, are yes. you? <laughs> I'm fair, but yeah. life is tough. But not only is life tough, the audience is tougher. Because you've been in the audience, I'm sure, and you all have going, oh, God, wish this was over. And I don't want my dancers ever to be exposed to that. I want them to go out there and knock all your socks off. I just want them to be the best in the world. And are you producing dancers in yes. your schools here now? Are they world class? Yes, we yeah. have a couple that will go on to work, yes. And I'm listen, really excited about and, that. And in terms of that, right, you were really, really good and you were doing very, very well and everything. Did you, in a sense, then, when your mother died, did you have to kind of... Were you walking away from the dream you'd had since you were a little girl to come back and do this? Um, no, I never. I would never walk away from something that if I still had uh, that kind of passion about it. But it was just, it was just I couldn't do it anymore. It's not that I don't love it. Like I mean, last week I was dancing in New York. I still dance. It's still. It's. it's okay. I don't consider myself a dancer anymore. But if I must, I still can. But, you know, it was just time. It was just time for me, and yeah. I was afraid I'd end up. 40 because you usually finish your dancing career at 40 and I'd be jaded yeah. and having to start again with your schools and building and I mean what I've done in Ireland so far I fought so hard to get where I am and I'm going to continue to fight to get what I want yeah